Hello everyone, this is Karthik Salvaraj and welcome to part 4 of this IBM MQ video tutorials. Today we will be seeing about what a local queue is. So I will log in to the server straight away. Okay. So I have already created a queue manager by the name test. So if you want to know how to create a queue manager, you can check out my previous videos. So coming to the topic local queue. So what is a local queue? So local queue is nothing but a physical container which holds a message that can be retrieved by the application. Either the application can drop message into this local queue or they can retrieve the messages from the local queue. Okay, So uh, it might be a little bit vague by this time but uh, when we move on to the practicals you will come to know what it is all about. So first you can either use uh, this uh, MQ Explorer to create a local queue or you can use the command prompt. So I'll be creating queues using both options. So let me create a queue using MQ Explorer. So if you go to new, you have many queues and you have to click this local queue option. Okay. So you can name it as local for this tutorials. Go to next. So you can have you can see that there are so many parameters which are available. Uh, example put message get message we'll be seeing about uh, all these stuffs in the uh, subsequent videos okay and uh, here you have a usage option which is normal or transmission so now we'll be using this as a normal I'll be explaining this in my later videos as well okay. when you go to the extended tab it shows you it uh, it has so many other uh, properties as well so maximum queue depth so it is defined as 5000 so this is nothing but the maximum number of messages that the queue can hold at a particular point of time so suppose i uh, drop 5000 messages into the queue and no application is reading the messages from the queue so all the 5000 messages are there in the queue and when i try to post another one message into this queue it will throw me an error that it has reached the maximum limit so uh, by default it is 5000 but you can have the queue depth uh, uh, at the maximum of uh, nine nines okay but uh, usually uh, depending upon the interface and the uh, uh, message frequency they scale it up so it, it depends okay so next we have a parameter called maximum message length which is defined in bytes so 4194304 bytes represent which is equivalent to 4 MB so a particular message or a single message can at the max only be of 4 MB size. So if you try to drop a message, I mean a single message of more than 4 MB of size, then it will throw an error that it has uh, exceeded the maximum limit. So there is a restriction in MQ. This value can be in a, a maximum of 100 MB. So your messages cannot be more than 100 MB, I mean a single message. Uh, you, you can have 4 MB message, I mean uh, 100 messages of 4 MB each, but you cannot have a single message which is exceeding 4 MB. Okay. That is what this maximum message length denotes. And uh, other properties, we can leave it to the default ones. And uh, clustering, uh, triggering events, and storage. We will be seeing, I mean, each one has its own properties, but it is a uh, what having having a separate session on these things okay now i'll click finish to create this queue call local okay so now you have got a queue created called local and you can see that uh, we have a lot of uh, parameters for this as well open input count open output count the current queue depth and um, whether put messages allowed or get messages allowed and uh, you can see a whole lot of properties over there which we could which we could have defined in the creation screen okay okay it's a bit uh, slow uh, okay so now we can try to post uh, some messages into this queue called local so you have two options to post the message either you can right click this Just a minute. Right click this and you have an option called put test message. Okay. And you can uh, put a message called test and put. Okay. And close this. 
and uh, you can see that now the current Q depth is 1 because we have just now dropped a test message. So this is, this is one way of uh, dropping messages but uh, uh, IBM provides a uh, uh, testing tool called RFH Util which is a very powerful tool and uh, which can be used for uh, uh, dropping on reading or browsing the messages from this queue. So I have already downloaded the software uh, and uh, this tool has more capability and I will be explaining about how to use this tool in a different session as well. So let me launch this tool. So uh, this RFH util can uh, um, be used to read the message or browse or write the message into the queues which are specific to this particular server. Okay. So if you want to write messages or read messages from a queue in a remote server, you should be using RFH util C which is over here and C stands for RFH util client. Okay. So now if you see here, so so test is the only queue manager which is available in this local server. So that is the only one which is gets listed. If I had another uh, queue manager called uh, uh, today, then uh, it would have also been listed in this list. Okay. So now I go here and also you should press this load names so that all the queue gets loaded. Then I press the queues which are available. So I can see that the queue local which I have created now is being listed over here. Okay. So you have many options, read queue, write queue, browse queue. So read queue, when you read the messages from the queue, uh, the messages will be read and the messages will be lost. Uh, lost in the sense, uh, it will be no more residing into the queue. So you are actually reading it, that's it. Uh, you cannot uh, retain the message again. But if you use browse option, you can uh, view the messages. I just click browse. If I go to data, I can see that uh, uh, this is what I have written test so I can see that data and uh, if you see that uh, message will be retained it is not uh, read or it would be in the queue till I read the message okay so now I'll uh, you, you can see the current queue depth is one still one because I used browse queue option but if I read the queue okay you can see that the queue depth is been reduced to zero because I have read the message from this queue okay and uh, now if you see I have read the message and uh, you might have seen there is an op option in uh, MQ Explorer which is called open input count. Okay. So open input count is nothing but the number of application from which this queue is being read. So it considered RFH util as an application. So as I have used RFH util to read the messages from this particular queue, it is showing me that open input count as 1. So the open output count is exactly the opposite of this. So if I try to, if an application tries to post a message into this queue, uh, it will show me the number of applications that is trying to post messages in this queue. So now I will use uh, RFH util to post some messages into this queue. So now let me post a valid XML message. So I already uh, downloaded a sample XML message. Okay, you can double click this. Okay, so if you want to see the content, so it has loaded now, but if I haven't returned into the queue because it's still zero. I can see the data over here. Go to this data tab, and this is an XML message, so you have to click the XML option so that it gets formatted as an XML. So, this is the data that I'm going to write into this queue. Okay, so I go to the main tab and I write into this queue, and you can see the queue depth being changed as uh, one. And if I go to the explorer uh, and fresh refresh, you can see that now the open output count has become 1 and this has become 0 because now RFH Util application is trying has dropped a message into this queue. Okay, So if I again uh, try to read the message from this queue, then the open input count will be 1 and this would become 0. Let me show you that. Okay. And you can see that the current queue of this one. Now I read the message. Uh, just okay. So I have pressed it two times. That's why first it has read the message, and next time it has showed me that there's no messages in this queue. And if I go to this MK Explorer tab, now you can see it has shifted over to here because there is one application which is trying to read the messages from this queue. 
okay so uh, now uh, so this is what happens to our uh, i mean uh, for a common uh, uh, people what is this is what we can see how it works but internally if you want to know how local queue works i'll show you how that works so whatever the messages that you drop into this local queue get stored in this local server in a in a in a file system basically as files okay so uh, if i'll show you that folder so for uh, there will be a folder called qmgrs so under which a folder will be created by the name of the queue manager so our queue manager name is test so under that you can see that there is a folder called queues okay so in which you will be having a folder called at mangled so this at mangled folder will contain all the uh, queue files so this is the queue file which has been created for the local queue local queue local okay so uh, and this would take a random name uh, so if i create another queue by some other name then you can see another queue file getting created over here okay i'll show you i'll just show you that so i'll create another local queue by the name uh, uh, another okay i'll have the default properties let me click finish okay and uh, if i go to that particular uh, file path i can see there is another uh, uh, queue file created so for each queue that we create there will be a queue file created over this and uh, you can see the size of these files as 2kb now so now let me try to load the queue local with uh, some messages so you can see that the size of this will get increased because the messages that we post into the queue uh, physically gets stored in this particular file okay so i'll show you that uh, okay now i'll uh, write uh, many messages i mean uh, i'll write as many messages for test purpose so i've written somewhere around 26 messages to this queue so if i come over here you can see that now it has turned into 80 kb so the messages are in turn stored in this queue file okay so now you might uh, think what if i have uh, so many queues and how to associate the queue name with this random uh, queue file name uh, there is a command to find out that as well okay all you have to go to is the gui and the command is dsp mq fls hyphen m the queue manager name and the queue name so here we have as local okay now it uh, gives us the corresponding queue file name so you can see that it is a uh, uh, q uh, i and ends with uh, i mean uh, for the I mean q i d exclamatory 72 so this is a 72 one and 0707 07. so this is a corresponding queue for the queue call local okay so if i want to see it for the queue another all i have to do is change the queue name over here so it will tell me the queue file name which corresponds to this particular queue call another so 002 so you can see 002 this is a queue file for the queue call another okay so uh, this is how internally how mq stores the messages okay so uh, you could have seen that we have uh, some properties called uh, uh, put inhibit and uh, get inhibit i'll show you the how it works so when you have the these both are uh, by default allowed so if i just have this as inhibited inhibited in the sense you are not allowed to get messages from this queue and i apply and uh, press ok so you have 26 uh, messages in this queue and uh, if i use rfhutil to read the messages from this queue it will throw me an error queue get inhibited so you can't read the messages from this queue so uh, this will be sometimes used in uh, some uh, specific scenarios when your uh, target system uh, shouldn't take the messages from this queue due to some issues so that's where or uh, in testing purpose when you want to retain the messages so that's where this get them in inhibited is used so similarly when you have it as uh, uh, okay now now but 
it is only get inhibited so you cannot get the messages from this queue but you can post the messages into this queue because we haven't uh, done that put messages is still allowed so if you see that I will be allowed to put messages so now the queue depth is 31 okay so if I go and uh, change this put messages as inhibited then I will not be allowed to put messages as well okay so I go there so now I try to post some messages it says me put is inhibited okay so this is all about the uh, general functioning of a local queue and uh, thanks for watching my video and uh, if you have any queries you can uh, comment it below so I'll uh, see you in my next video thanks happy learning